everybody, it's Alice K. Reckle House from Threshold of Hineni, and I wanted to go on and continue in chapter three of First Peter. And again, we're looking specifically for what Peter is saying to the recipients about the recipients. So I haven't written down anything for a while and I haven't highlighted anything for a while because there's nothing really that he's saying about them. It's more instructions to them and we're going to focus on that later. Um, but I am going through and, you know, when something strikes me, I'm talking about it. So this is kind of a twofold type of study or whatever. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we were just reading about how, let me just go back to verse three here. Your adornment must not be merely external, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. So that's what we talked about last time. And then he's going to talk some more about wives and submission. And I'm not going to speak to that simply because I do not feel like I can give anything balanced to that. <laughs> <laughs> to that discussion. I, I'm going to leave that to others to do. I'm not saying that it's not important. I'm just saying I'm not qualified to talk about that. So, but I'll read it to you because I don't think that we should skip it. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. Okay. And then I also want to mention when I do this, I'm not preparing for it at all like I do for like the Abraham study that I'm doing or anything like that. I'm just giving this to you raw. You're seeing it as I read it. I haven't read the book of First Peter for quite a few months, probably maybe even more than a year. And so I'm looking at this and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to speak to me and um, for me and not necessarily for you but for me i'm not using this as a teaching time i'm using this as a come along with me while i do my bible study time um just to kind of show you how it could be done and to give you some examples uh but when i'm talking about the way that that the lord's asking me to apply things that's not necessarily true of how he's asking you to apply it so you husbands, in the same way, live with your, lives, with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker, since she is a woman, and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Which I think is really interesting that he puts there, so your prayers will not be hindered. So I think, men, that this is something you want to figure out. <laughs> and I'm not going to try to tell you what this means, because I'm, I don't think it's my place. Um, but it's, it's important, so that your prayers will not be hindered. To sum up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Wow, you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Um, in the Bible it says elsewhere, and I think that it's in one of Paul's books, that Jesus was the first fruits and that... Um, that we inherit, you know, that eternal life and, and all that a relationship with God is our inheritance because Jesus died. And um, I love this. You were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. For the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So I want to go back here to verse 9. Not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. Um, this is something that God's been really working in my life in the past couple years, or uh, maybe three years or so, um, because I've really been through, I've been through a lot of rejection throughout my whole life. But I've been through rejection by people who really matter to me. Um, in the last few years and that's been really difficult and you know your natural instinct is that you want to lash out but what he's been showing me about that is that is exactly what it says here even though I hadn't read these verses in regard to that but not returning evil for evil or insult for insult and I'm not saying even that they intended evil I'm not saying that I'm not gonna make a judgment call on it um, but it's but just you know not to do what comes naturally, which is to insult back or make them feel rejected or whatever, but um, giving a blessing instead. And so what I've started doing uh, a couple years ago, 
uh, whenever I started feeling hurt about this or when I started feeling angry um, was that I would stop and I would pray and bless them. And it, not not a blessing of, Lord, help them to understand that they need to love me so that you know, they'll receive blessings or nothing like that, nothing like that, but just, you know, that God would bless them. And, um, and then I learned my, my husband was a Quaker and they practiced what's called holding someone in the light. And that became very significant for me and very helpful for me in, in praying for these people, because it's so hard not to put my agenda there, uh, wanting them to change. And what holding in, in the light means is that you just hold somebody up to God and you don't say anything. You just hold them up to him and you let God love on them. And you don't put any of your agenda there. You just hold them up before him. Like you just want his attention on them. And, um, and there's just a lot of love that comes into your heart when you do that and forgiveness and, and everything else when you just, you know, it's like you're holding this person up for God to bless, but that blessing spills out onto you too. And, um, and it just really, it really helped me a lot. Um, another thing was coming to the realization that there are people who want me in their lives. And so I need to focus on those people, not on the people who reject me because being a people pleaser, <laughs> I really don't take to rejection kindly um, because that means that I haven't succeeded in pleasing you. <laughs> and so, you know, besides learning that you can't please everybody and learning that there are certain people that God has called me to, not everyone, um, but also learning that I need to not spend time grieving or being upset or even wondering why these people rejected me, but instead turn my focus to the people that God has called me to. He hasn't called me to these people. They don't resonate with me. They don't want to hear from me. They don't want me in their life. And so that's not who I'm called to. I'm called to people over here. And that has really also brought a ton of healing and, um, and has allowed me to be more razor focused on what God's calling me to. So anyway, I'm going to stop there because I think that that is possibly something that will speak to a number of you because I know that we all go through rejection and um, and especially as women we feel it men oftentimes can just let it slide off their back not always but some a lot of men can and for women it's a little bit harder to do that so I'm hoping that maybe some of what I shared about my own experience and what God's teaching me and he's still in the process of teaching me I might have more to say on it in five years or maybe I'll have really grown through this um, but this is the point that I'm at right now and maybe that will be something that can really help you, I'm hoping. Anyway, um, I love you all, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.